Now, I'm a bit of a, a stickler for nice, tidy wiring, and I thought, well, uh, maybe I could add a little something to uh, this particular build, um, <laughs> pimping my X-carve, as it were. Uh, and so I've got hold of this spiral wrap, um, and I'm going to use that just to tidy up uh, the loose wires to bring them together. And it'll help to protect them, and it'll help to make things look neat. Now, the trick is, when you uh, want to put this stuff on, is to start at one end uh, and then uh, gently uh, try and unwrap the spiral, as it were, twist it anti-clockwise, and then you can then feed it on very easily. It does go on pretty quickly. Uh, check every now and again that it looks tidy. And when you get near the end, uh, then you'll cut it to length. Uh, this is slightly longer than it needs to be, but you can see what I'm doing and this will then will be the uh, the two uh, Wires that come from the motor and they'll go down uh, behind the back here uh, to the terminal block uh, But I want them to look nice and so I thought this was a good thing to do Now this stuff is cheap enough. Uh, I got um, I think it was 10 meters uh, off eBay a big pile like this and it cost me uh, I, th I think about two pounds. Uh, I can't be sure of that, but it certainly wasn't very much and postage was free. And I'm doing a similar thing here with the uh, wires for the Z motor and I'll do it for the uh, X motor in a minute as well. And that's that. And what I'll do is at some point I'll put a cable tie uh, around uh, the, the three of these uh, just to hold them uh, loosely together uh, in a tidy manner. Uh, now, when you're trying to uh, break out a number of wires from this uh, spiral wrap, uh, sometimes it can be quite a neat job to have them coming out uh, individually uh, so that when they're then placed above the terminal block, uh, they're going to uh, the right uh, area uh, and that will look uh, quite tidy. Now, I've taken out one of the screws from the terminal block just to show you how it works. Uh, you should be able to see that there's a washer there under the screw head. And the idea is that uh, you should uh, just loosen off uh, the screw sufficiently uh, to allow that washer to come back from the body of uh, the uh, terminal block. Then you slip the wire in uh, behind there between the inside of the washer and the body of the terminal block. If you were to get the wire in between the uh, the head of the screw and this washer, then it would not be held in place very securely. You don't need to take the screws out, as I've done with this one. Uh, you just need to loosen them sufficiently to be able to poke the wire in behind. Now, for some people, the wiring stage may look a little bit daunting, but uh, do not despair. It is actually terribly easy. And as long as you follow the step-by-step -step instructions, it will not be a problem at all. All you need to do is to make sure, uh, when it says the black wire or the red wire, that you are certain you're using the right one. Because going back and sorting wiring out after you've made a little whoopsie uh, can be difficult. So take extra care, but it's not difficult. Now in the instructions it tells you to take this uh, grey stepper uh, wire, as they call it, uh, and cut it to length according to your uh, particular machine. And in my case, uh, with the 1000 millimeter machine, I've got two 12 foot lengths, uh, one seven foot and one five foot length. And one of the instructions is to uh, strip uh, back uh, the outer insulation uh, and uh, to expose the wires inside and then strip back the insulation on each of those. Now, if you have a tool that looks something like this, uh, you'll find it uh, rather useful. Uh, and the way it works is, uh, as you squeeze the handle here, so there's a pair of pinch pieces in here, which pinch the uh, outer wrapper, like so, as you see, and pulls off that insulation. And now if you do it carefully, uh, that will work with this type of cable. Have a practice go. Uh, there is enough cable for you to do that. Have a practice go and some of these machines have a, an adjustment so that you can adjust uh, just how tightly they're gripping uh, the insulation. In my case I did that in two goes. That allows me then get, to get at what's inside and inside here you'll find uh, there is a what an uninsulated earth wire and also some shielding which is made of uh, some sort of foil. And there's also a little 
uh, fibre filament of some description. I'm going to cut those off like so. And that leaves me with those four wires. And I can now strip the ends of those. And again, using my handy little tool. One. Two. Three. And four. Simple as that. There's a, an, another uh, tip uh, to stop these uh, wires now which are exposed uh, going at all angles. Just give them a little twist like so. It'll help to keep them together until you've got them safely in a terminal block. Now uh, with the stepper motor cables, um, in the case of the one which is on the right hand uh, Y plate, it's going to go uh, into the lower terminals here and then it's going to be threaded through um, this hole here to go to the other side. And, and if you look to see the, the method I've used to just to make this look tidy, so red goes to red, white goes to blue, green goes to green, and black goes to black. And with that done, we're now going to thread the other end through the hole so it can go through uh, the uh, frame here all the way to the other side. And you may need to sort of just uh, encourage it a little bit because when it gets to the other end, uh, it's going to hit, hit against part of the uh, Y plate on the other side. So you might need to go around and help that out. So I've twisted those together. I'm just doing a double check that I've got uh, white goes to red, uh, blue goes to red, green goes to green, and black goes to black. And now I'm going to put them in the terminal block. Now I'm at the stage now where this stepper motor wire uh, should be attached to the terminal block here. I, I've already placed uh, the drag chain here uh, because I wanted to see uh, the path that the cable was going to take. And if this is connected under here, even if I do one of my neat uh, little uh, jobs at the bottom, we're going to have uh, the cable looking something like that. Um, I think it might be better uh, perhaps to have it uh, like that, uh, so it goes around like that. What I'm trying to do is to avoid any cables uh, sitting below the, s the bottom surface here. And it may be in, th in this case that uh, we should have been instructed to put these uh, again in the top uh, connectors uh, with the other cables. Now I appreciate that is quite tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect at the bottom but I'm going to have a, a loop like that uh, and that way uh, it will keep things fairly close to the terminal panel. Also, in order to uh, try and avoid anything going below the surface, I've moved this terminal block up. Uh, there are two screw holes in it. Uh, originally, I'd copied the um, instructions uh, and it was uh, effectively one notch lower. I've now moved it up, so I'm using the bottom um, holes here for those screws. So that gives a little bit more room. Now, I've put the drag chains in here so I could uh, check the route of the wiring. Uh, and of course, they don't have the cable in. Um, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to have to undo one end to feed the cable in. But you don't need to. Um, if you join the, th the three uh, wires, in my case, that have to go through this um, uh, drag chain here, if you join them together with a bit of masking tape and, and, and cover the end over here so it's a little uh, smoother, and then you can feed it in uh, quite easily. And you can get it as far as you can, and you do that by moving uh, this carriage all the way to one end, and you keep feeding the cable until it's just coming up to this corner here, and then move the carriage back. That now is taking uh, the cable around that bend, and now you can continue to push it the rest of the way through. And you can probably see it's now just about sticking out here. So that's a fairly simple way of, of getting those uh, cables through the drag chain, uh, even if it's in situ. And I should point out that uh, these uh, grey cables, I've marked them Z and X there, and I've got a corresponding Z and X uh, on this end as well. So I will know uh, which cable is which. 
Now this looks like a whole bunch of knitting, <laughs> which I suppose it is really. Uh, there are seven cables here and I'm going to uh, try and do it with the drag chain in a fixed position. I've put masking tape around the end to join them all together. Once you get to the bend, uh, then you can go around the bend like so. So now it's everything around the bend and we can continue to try and get the progress. If it gets stuck, it may be because um, it's stuck on an individual um, gap between the uh, parts of the chain. So you can sort of stick something in there as it's an open chain. And there that is, it's at the open end. I can just pull, and don't pull too, too hard. Just pull gently. And what we're trying to end up with is all these cables here, nice and tidy. So I'm going to just pull enough through so that so I can undo my tape at the end without any worry. And then I can then, if need be, pull on an individual cable just to tidy it up. So uh, I'm pleased with that. Um, everything is now tidy under here, as you can see. I've put a bit of, it is actually shrink wrap, but I've decided not to heat it and shrink it. Uh, if I had some ordinary sleeving, I would have done so. Um, but if I had shrunk it around all these cables and then at some later stage wanted to uh, remove a cable, then it would have been difficult. So shrink wrapping around this sort of situation is probably not advised. Uh, but that's, that's covered that, that's keeping that uh, uh, free from any damage uh, in the workshop. Uh, this is tidy under here, that's all okay. So I'm pretty pleased and it should now move to and fro without any, without any problems from the cable. So that's good. Well, I think that's uh, pretty good. I'm pleased with that.